how did you then get the call up for, for that? I'm, I'm interested in kind of how that then led to, to you, essentially. Okay, well, the search that you were talking about was actually the surface search for survivors, and that was being led by the people, the Channel Island authorities, their own um, uh, um, Coast Guard, if you will. Uh, it, it, it was actually the, the, the head of the ports there. Um, and they also have a, a volunteer service that has aircraft that can go up and, and search uh, for people. But what they were looking for were, were the two guys, David Ibbotson and Emiliano Sala. Had they survived the crash and maybe they were in a raft or clinging to wreckage, or maybe they could swim to the island, that's what they were looking for. That was the sur surface search. Um, that's different than what I did, which was the right. underwater search for the plane, knowing that it, it had crashed. Okay. And really, the surface search went on for as long as anybody could have realistically expected it to, because after three days in those conditions, nobody was su survived. They would have drowned or through exposure alone. So really, the search went on for a, actually a protracted period. It was one of the longest searches and most expensive searches in the history of, of the island. What we did was totally different. So I got involved because, um, you know, the accident happened on a, on a Monday, I think, and um, it was being played in the news, you know, um, this, this, you know, obviously high profile of football in the middle of a of an expensive transfer in the middle of uh, transfer, you know, season. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> tuned into that, those things. Um, I'm a football fan, so I was aware of it. And I saw this. I saw this uh, this clip on the news of Emiliano's sister, Romina. Yeah. In an interview. And she's clearly a young girl. You know, she was in her 20s, mid 20s, clearly a young girl by herself. She doesn't know the language, speaking Spanish. And uh, and she's in tears. She's and she's desperately pleading um, for for help. She, and and I just I just I just put I, I could just imagine what that poor girl was going through. I felt so bad for her. And um, I heard on the tell, I heard, I was with my wife. We were out somewhere away from the office and I heard on the radio, this again, this report that they abandoned the search. And, and, and that now there's a question about where the plane was. And, and I just thought, I told my wife, I said, you know what? I'm not going to, well, I'm not going to come home. It was, it was late. It was already past working hours. I said, I'm going to go to the office and, and, and look into this. And literally in 15 minutes with the information that was available, I thought, actually, that plane could be found. So I contacted um, the embassy that was supporting Romina and let them know that, you know, I'd be happy. Listen, if they need any advice or anything like that, and I only live five minutes from where I am right now. This is my office in Midhurst. I live five minutes away in a near, nearby village. You know, I sent out this email. By the time I got home, there was a reply. And a couple of conversations later, I was scheduled then to drive to Cardiff the next morning. The next morning. So this was, uh, that was all happening on a Thursday. The meeting was happening on a Friday where the UK Air Accident Investigation Branch representatives or investigators from the branch were going to be meeting with Romina and various other people in Cardiff at like 11 o'clock in the morning. And uh, and so then I was invited to that meeting as a as a as a as a volunteer advisor. Any whatever I could do, I was just saying, listen, I'll just drive to Cardiff. I'll, uh, if I can help, I can help. If I can, I can't. And that was the start of it. You mentioned earlier, you know, about dealing with the pressure. I mean, I mean, I remember just this situation. I mean, when you've got people like the president of Argentina involved, this was this was obviously global news. You know, you 
you were the man then in the you know at the kind of lead in it uh how was that pressure for you I, I, I personally for me i wouldn't be sleeping at night i mean i'm curious you know what, what was that time like for you well well it was very intense it went incredibly quickly i guess the pressure came from the fact that in that meeting in cardiff on that friday first off i wasn't allowed into the meeting no. <laughs> so i drove three hours to get to this meeting i was met by um, and I'll forget some of the people's names, but the um, uh, the ambassador of the consulate was there helping Romina. Um, so there were, and then it was a translator. Um, and uh, they came down and, and I saw the two, I was there before the AAB guys came. I saw the two come in and they came down and said, oh, this is a, this is a private meeting. Police matters will be discussed. It's confidential. Um, you can't come in the meeting. And so uh, there was nothing I could do. I it was in a hotel, a local hotel. I sat down in the restaurant and actually I used that time. I had to wait like two or three hours. I used that time to start calling all my contacts up. I need a boat. I need sonars. I need a crew. I started putting all that together. And because I went into this meeting feeling that plane could be found. The clues were good enough. I mean, they had a radar that literally showed the plane at the last known position to the point where it was only, um, you know, a, a couple thousand feet off the sea surface. And to me, that told me that plane crashed right there. And it was going to be not far from that last known position. And that if you got out there quickly, you'd be able to find the plane. And so that was the confidence in my knowledge going into that meet. And that's why I wanted to put together a search plan. Finally, I got called up to the meeting and realized immediately, oh, it wasn't confidential or private. The room was full of people. <laughs> there were police liaison officers, but there were people from Carter Football Club. There were uh, lawyer, pe legal people there. There was obviously Romina, the two AA guys. There were like, you know, 10, 10 people. It wasn't a, a small meeting. So I, I was being kept, kept out, I think. Um, and fair enough. Anyhow, uh, they, I sat down and they, the AAB guys turned me and said, what are you doing here? <laughs> Who are you? What are you doing here? And I thought that was a little bit odd because, you know, um, or I, I've done enough of these projects and I'm known for doing them. Uh, all you have to do is type my name in. If you want to know who David Mertz is, you just type my name in Google and you see that I have a track record of doing these things. I'm not just a, a bloke that walked off the street and said, hey. <laughs> so um, so I, I, I said, you know, I, I think it could be found and I've been working, you know, I've had this time and I think it can be found. Um, and, and what immediately came back is the AAIB, at least particularly one in, of those individuals, uh, had a totally different opinion. Um, one, um, there's no guarantee we can find it. Well, that's always the case, but he was really pessimistic, not optimistic like me. Uh, he said, the currents will drag it away. First off, the plane crashed so violently, will it be destroyed and in bits? And that makes it easier for the currents or the fishermen to take it away. The other thing, it, it, it sank in an area of the uh, English Channel where there's lots of other wreckage, lots of other things, geology that makes it hard to find. And finally, and probably this is the most well, you know, I think probably the most damaging thing where they said, even if we find it, we, we don't think we'll learn anything new. Basically, they, without saying it, they believe they knew what, why the plane crashed. Right. You know, they, they had formed their conclusions. That's my belief. And the conversation that I had with them pretty much said that. And I said, well, I'm sorry, I disagree. I think it can be found. And that meeting broke up. I was able to connect with Romina 
and um, uh, Emiliano's personal agent, Mesa and Dai, um, was the other person I was working with. And we immediately started um, putting together a plan that Friday. So this is how fast it went. Thursday, I contacted him. Friday, we're in that meeting. On the drive home from Cardiff, I'm on the phone with Mesa the whole time. He immediately starts to go fund me. The money starts rolling in. He says, how much do you need? I said, well, let's start with like 150,000. And then it's winter time and that's the worst time to search. You get lots of downtime. On Saturday, I'm down in Southampton looking at the vessel that I want to hire. Uh, and 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 lining up the sonar. So by Saturday, I've got midday. I've got I've got my boat. I have my sonars. I have my team. I know what we're going to do. Sunday, I'm on a plane to 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 Guernsey. Uh, Sunday, I'm on the plane, and I don't even know it. I'm on the plane. I just got on a plane to Guernsey. Mesa's in the front of the plane. I'm in the back of the plane. We were separated by like 20 aisles. Didn't even know it till, till we're texting each other. We're on the plane together. Uh, the weather is so bad. Uh, and I've flown a lot around the world. We actually had to do a touchdown and take off because oh it, <laughs> a pilot got nervous. So we came in and he said, no, 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 I'm coming around again. The weather was that bad. And, and, and by Monday, we raised the we had raised the amount to three hundred fifty thousand. By Monday, we had the money. We had everything lined up, and we announced we're going. And the AAIB had to reverse their position and say and say we're going to join you. And they hired another ship. So it was very very intense. Uh, by Wednesday, I moved the boat our search vessel from Southampton or from uh, Southampton down to the islands, down to Guernsey. And, um, and Saturday, was it Saturday? We were out searching. So it all went in a week. So the soonest we could get out there, uh, the first weather window. And we had this small boat uh, with a crew of about seven people, something like that. And the AAIB hired, this expensive ship, you know, 60, 70 meter ship out of, uh, out of the continent, out of, I don't know where it was in, uh, in the Netherlands or something like that. Um, and it was a bit of almost like a, we could see them on AAS running down the channel to get to the search area at the same time that we did. And, and fortunately, um, we, we had a, an agreement between ourselves and the authorities about how we were going to do this because we, we were going to work together and we did, but we chose the correct box to search in and, and, and found it faster. So, so it was this really intense period. Um, was there pressure? Um, I think it was a different kind of pressure. I didn't feel like the pressure, am I going to succeed or fail? I didn't even think about any of that in a personal content context. I was just thinking about doing the best job possible and, and doing it all. And, and fortunately, I had a lot of, I've done a lot of work, but I've done a lot of these high, high profile projects where the yeah. media are involved and you're being looked at constantly. Um, the public are involved. They have an invested in interest. You know, everybody is hopeful for you to find it. So it, it, it wasn't a new thing for me. And, and, and so in, then, in that sense, I'm really grateful that I've had the career that I've had to be able to step into something like that, help out somebody. Initially, all I wanted to help was that girl. And then the, then um, Emiliano's mother came, you know, she was at came, she came on the next plane that, and, and we met her and we, I spent time with her. So helping out the family and really had a team, a bond, a real bond with Mesa. We worked really closely together. I, this wasn't all me. There was lots of other people and obviously all the people who donated. And, that, and that's the other thing. You, you feel 
you know, of course, you have people like Mbappe giving 50,000 quid or whatever, or 50,000 euros, and you had some very high profile footballers who were donating. But you had a lot of public too. You know? I was one of them. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we felt, and, and I explained this to the family and to Mesa that, listen, in terms of the media, we can't just now, we've gotten all this money from all these people. We can't just go into a shell and do this on a confidential basis. These people are, have, have, have you know, empowered us, have given us the money to do this. We have to keep them up to speed. So all of the, there's all, at the same time that you're doing this operational aspect, you have to decide how am I going to how am I going to deal with the media? The media attention obviously was very great. Mesa, God bless his soul. Uh, Mesa for an incredible character, and frankly, he was more important to this whole thing than I was because he had the contacts uh, and the drive in terms of uh, getting the funding and 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 all sorts of things behind the scenes. He was behind the scenes guy. I was in front of the scene in front of the scenes but he didn't he didn't want to speak to the media that's just his own personal approach so it 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 turned for me to be the spokesman on behalf of the family so you have to do that in the in the right way so the main thing is how you handle that and 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 at the same time you know once a body was found that changes the ball game and so there had to be an agreement between myself and the AARP about how we how we, how we, how we, because uh, they wouldn't say anything, but you know, the press would come to me. So it, it was complicated. It was intense. Uh, did I feel pressure? No, I just felt, um, you know, a lot of work. That's all. And, 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 and as I said, for, 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 to have had, the career that I've had to put me in that position with the right skills and experience and profile that people said, yeah, this guy, he can do it. He's, he's bona fide. He's the real deal. Um, where I can volunteer my time. Also, I didn't have to worry about it. I have a successful business that allows me to give all my time free. I donated like, just like you um, is really a, a, a very satisfying thing for me to be involved with and and that it's successful and that 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 the most important things that came out of it is that emmy's body could be recovered and they had a burial and they have something to bring home that's really important sadly that wasn't the case for the ibbotson family and and then we did it for the ibbotson family yeah, they did repeated the exact same thing and i did the as much as i could it was a different type of and actually that there was a lot of press there was as much there was a lot of pressure on that because what we were doing was more seat of the pants using technical divers and that's a whole other story but we did it again for them and sadly you know david's body was never found but at least the family knew that he wasn't there absolutely he knew we and that we did everything and they did everything because they raised that money. They did set up a GoFundMe and raised the money and spoke to people. So, you know, David's wife and his children, I dealt most, mostly with one of his daughters, were able to, you know, they've lost their father. They've lost a husband, you know, devastating but they did everything they possibly can. And that's really important to them. And then at the end of all of this months later for them to do the blood chemistry of Emiliano's body and to find out that he had 58% carbon monoxide in his blood. Listen, nobody, that was on nobody's radar. That was completely unexpected and really a very, very important piece of information that changed the nature of the whole investigation and not just of that incident, but in terms of the future um, of, of, of air safety in this country with these small planes. How many people are flying around with planes without carbon monoxide 
sensors, the type of sensors that people have in their houses. Yeah. They don't have one. Um, and so that brings me back to that first meeting in Cardiff at the hotel where the AAIB said, listen, even if we find it, or they intimated to me, even if we find it, we're probably not going to learn anything new about the cause. And that was blown right out of the water with that, with, with that, that, with that finding from Emiliano's body, which his body would never have been recovered had we not initiated the search and found the plane. So, um, you know, what can I say? Um, it was something I volunteered to do. I was very happy to do it. I'm, 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 you know, I, I, I felt, you know, closely connected to both families and I understood exactly without me suffering that loss as much as I could. I know how that loss affects people because almost everything I go out there and find there's death involved. And this is, I've been through this before and I know how this information changes people's lives and how these incidents uh, change their lives and how getting some of this information could, 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 you know, make things a little bit easier. So that's all I can say about that, which is a settle, which is a lot to say actually. And, and it's, it's almost an epic story in itself, isn't it? And interestingly, I remember watching, I think it was a Sky News interview that you gave beforehand. And I think that the mood was quite pessimistic. I mean, obviously, of course, people are, are hopeful. But and I remember you said, this is an MH370. And you seem to have a real air of kind of confidence. And I seem to remember, and of course, this, this was a number of years ago now, but I seem to remember you found it pretty quickly. Um, yeah. how, so, so could you talk me through, you know, when you actually set out, how quickly did you right. have the turnaround? It seemed to be quick, very quick. It, it was in hours. Uh, we found it oh. on the third line. And, and here's the way that worked, right? <clears throat> so the authorities from the radar traces had this last known position and, and, and they were able to refine that while we were building up to the search. Um, and, and so we knew pretty much we have what we call a last known position. And then we established era of boundaries. What's the potential, how far off could we be? not 10 miles, but, you know, half a mile, or whatever, but we established a box and it was two nautical miles, I think two nautical miles by two nautical miles, four square nautical miles, which isn't big, it's small, but in the channel, it's big. Uh, and the type of search instruments that we were using. So the, it was agreed between the AI, AAIB's funded uh, search using that big ship uh, they would search one half and we would search the other half. And how we, we would decide what, the, what, it, what it was. Well, I had my favorite side based on just almost an intuition. Maybe this is where the art, art comes into it. Based on an intuition, based on a number of things, I thought there's going to be a better chance we're going to find it here. It also made more sense that we were there because we were a smaller boat we're right in the channel where there's this uh, uh, there's this um, a special zone, like a traffic zone, where ships go one way and they go the other way, so there's no crashes and everybody knows it. So it's like a highway. It's one of the busiest stretches of water in the world, the English Channel. I mean, there's just ships going past, and these are big ships going really fast. Our little boat, they would crush us, and we're t towing, you know, behind, not really far, but we're still towing something in the water. A sonar and um so uh, for those reasons i chose this one side as well and we got there first because we were just coming out of guernsey that was the key of getting that boat from southampton and leaving it in guernsey i got them over in the middle of the week when the weather was good i said you guys go i'll pay for it you go you got a hotel or whatever so we 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 pre-stationed our vessel. So we were only two hours out in terms of getting out there where they had to come out from, from the North Sea. And uh, we got there first. And, uh, 
and I started searching on the center line, but I could look into their box because my sonar was looking sideways. But we found it in our box on the third line. It was basically in two hours, but then we wanted to be sure because it was mangled. The plane was essentially all there. there. So this idea that it completely fragmented and was lost, not the case. The plane was essentially all there. I mean, bits were broken. I mean, the plane was completely destroyed and bits of it were gone. The tail was gone. The, the, the bits, the ends of the wing were gone, but everything else was there. And, um, and so it looks like a crumpled mess on the sonar. And so we wanted to get a number of different images. I think we hit it like seven, eight times until we were certain. So meanwhile, we could see that they're searching their box. We're doing our thing. I don't know they were looking at us. I think they were completely ignorant to what we were doing or oblivious because we could see the pattern that they were doing. And then I called them up and said, listen, I think we've got it. Come over and uh, come over because they had the ROV. We didn't have an ROV, so they had to dive on it. I said, come over, but they had their own sonar and they looked at it and they said, uh, we don't think it looks that good. <laughs> we don't think it looks that good. And I said, well, we're confident. We're so we said, Di you know, you need to dive on it. So they switch from being the side scan sonar to the ROV. Meanwhile, we're waiting and waiting. It's getting dark. The weather's going up. Um, I didn't want to wait forever. And uh, finally, I uh, and they wouldn't tell us anything. I asked to be on that boat. I said, listen, on behalf of the family, I want to be on that vessel while you do the RV search. They said, no, no, we won't allow it. So, you know, that's the kind of... It was political. I don't know. No, yeah. You know, yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the obvious conclusion, you know. Uh, whether it's political or however you want to put it, but, you know, it's... Listen, it's our investigation. It's not yours. You you've been a uh, you've been in it. You've been you've meddled into this thing. or Whatever they want to <laughs> say, you know that's a kind of kind of thing. But listen, I understand it. So you know, I don't I don't. Um, but I, you know, I I I I I want I want this thing to be successful. I want to give them the best information. Anyhow, we went back and 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 it was on the way back that I got the call and they said. Um, we found it and and there's a body there and they wouldn't say which body it was they were very careful about that i didn't find that out till later um and um and they uh and 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 then we had to uh, uh, an agreement that i had to help them find get to the fa to the families because the families were in touch with me and they couldn't they there's a very very strict important protocol you have to follow that they have to be First, the families have to find out first from the authorities, the police or police liaisons or whatever. So I was helping and in, involved in that. Anyhow, the, all in all, the, the relationship with the AAB was worked well. It was cooperative. It is successful. But, you know, um, um, so so I don't know where that, that led us down to that. That, But you had asked how quickly we found it. Yeah, found it, yeah, yeah. found it right there. 